Drones are something that you can fly either autonomously by itself, so you press like a button and it'll do what you want just by itself. Or you can fly it manually with a controller. What can you do with drones? You can fly them, of course. You can um, take videos and pictures and you can race them. So there are many, there's three types of drones. One being totally great drones like this one right here. So it's a cheaper drone that you can get at Walmart, Target, cheap ones on Amazon. They usually run a hundred bucks or less. And they have brush motors. So they are more likely to burn out than brushless motors. And the next one is photography drones. So they have a camera on it that's more high resolution for HD videos. And then racing drones, which I don't have, but I will get one in the future. You put on these FPV goggles, and there's a camera on the drone, and you just sit somewhere, and you fly at like 55 miles an hour through gates and stuff, and you're trying to get the fastest lap time. So there's like a track set up with gates. So here's a video of like, so there's like freestyle with the racing drones, so it's kind of like skateboard, how you have like your kickflip, your ollie. With drones you have its own kind of tricks, so you do, you can do like flips, you can flip it forward, There, you can dive by buildings, so like you can go up and then you hold it right by the building, you go down, it's kind of a cool video. So here's some examples of freestyle. Instantly change. This is an example of like maybe a starter drone for like a kid. So it has like your prop guards on it that protect your furniture if you're flying inside. It has everything included. These are some photography drones. So this one is the DJI Phantom 3 Standard, which is which will run you 500 bucks. The DJI Phantom 4 is a $1,500 drone. It has more settings. So. This one's just your basic, it's the lowest in its class, it's just a starter photography drone. The Phantom 4 has some other cool stuff, so in the app you can actually, so say if you have a person in your shot, you can highlight them on the app on the touch screen, and then it'll follow them. Like you can just put the control down and just follow them. Or you can, or if somebody's doing like skateboarding, you can it'll just follow them. And they have sensors on them, so. They don't do so well around trees because they can't sense the smaller branches. But if you go like full forward, which I think the fastest they can go like 40 miles an hour, it'll just sense the wall and stop and automatically, like it won't crash in the building. And then racing drones, they can cost as much as you want to put into them. Usually people build them on their own, so you buy the frame and then you buy the motors. And the, it's called ESC, which is an electronic speed controller. So your power distribution board tells, gives power to the ESCs, and then based on your controller, it tells the motor how fast to rev up. Something so fun has laws too. So you don't want to fly over people if you don't have permission to. Don't want to make people mad. You have to fly under 400 feet in class G airspace, which is from 0 to 1,200 feet, it's more, it's just low over the ground. So you don't want to crash into any airplanes or cause damage or else you're already spending a lot of money on this, you don't want to spend more money. Oh. So I was at a local high school football game and I was getting some video of the football and 
I didn't really get in trouble or anything. I just, when I told like the electronics guy at our school about it, he said, oh, you probably shouldn't have done that, like do that because it's like their airspace over top of the high school and you have to get permission first in order to fly around it, which now I know, so I ask before I do it again. And then you have to register a drone weighing 250 grams or more, so like two pound drone. So this one you don't have to register because it's really, it's light. It doesn't do any damage if you ram it into a window or something. But this one, it's a lot bigger. So you have to register it with the FAA. You have a code that they give you and you either can type in tape a piece of paper or you physically write it on there. And so then if you crash in, like if it just, say if a motor burns out when you're flying it and it falls, damages somebody's property, um, they can, take the code and then when you register, you put your address and your phone number and they can tell you where they found it and they'll give you the bill. <laughs> I, uh, I didn't bring it with me today, but there's, you can do it yourself projects with these types of things. So I have a dropper that I have that I bread tie to the back of here. And I have another controller that controls a servo and a rod pulls out and you can drop stuff. So my friend Cameron was in baseball and I was helping him like practice catching high baseballs, so I put a baseball on the dropper, and I brought it up quite high and dropped it, and he tried to catch it. And I did that with a football too, and I drop Hot Wheels cars sometimes. <laughs> and it onto cement, it just obliterates and it's kind of fun. Where you can drop paper airplanes and they glide into out of sight. I haven't thought of anything else to drop. And some other, some other DIY projects is I like everything aviation, so I built this airplane. I reused the wing from a previous airplane that I crashed and ruined. And I recycled the electronics out of it and made the frame out of the paper, like styrofoam plates. And this one actually flies. I'm not going to fly it today. But. And then right now I'm working on this airplane. I've had this built for about a year and I've been waiting for the tasseling season to come up so then I can have money to get the electronics for it. Just like 200 bucks because you have to buy the motor, the ESC, the battery, the servos, and control rods. Hopefully this summer I'll be able to fly this one. So what I've learned is that my rule of thumb on flying is a 10 mile an hour wind and lower is the perfect time to fly. Anything above that gets sketchy and you can crash it. Oh yeah, and drop. So like when you're dropping things, if there's like a wind or a breeze and you aim it at the ground, it's not going to land there. So if you're dropping stuff, just be smart about it. Like, so because sometimes the wind can push it to somewhere you won't want, like a car. So how I got into drones was I started out with a helicopter that I got for Christmas when I was like five years old. So I was just inspired by aviation and I've been flying drones now for like five years. My first drone was just a full foam drone that I couldn't break anything or break it. So I ran that thing in the walls and stuff trying to learn how to fly. But then I got the hang of it and I, I've had like 10 drones, 12 drones. I've only got like two now that have survived. I actually turned one into a hovercraft. Like you, you can do so many things with these electronics. And I, the tinkering, I like take apart stuff all the time. So say if there's like a broken toy, I take it apart, strip the motors from it, and then use it for something else. Like with my other airplane at home, the motor burnt out, and I wasn't gonna spend 20 bucks on a new motor, so I recycled a motor from a previous airplane, and now it's flying just fine today. That's all I have. Um, who wants to fly a drone? So with this drone that I have, you can fly this drone, but not this one. It's in a simulator, so you get the real experience. Oh, I gotta set that up now. FPV is first person view, so it's like you're in the cockpit of the drone. So, I mean, I usually sit down when I do it, because I, I was standing this one time and I almost crashed into a wall and I, <laughs> almost fell because I got dizzy. 
Yeah. What? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll get that set up now. So here's the battery. It's quite huge. The ones that go to these ones are a lot smaller. Um, these drones, like the toy grade ones, you get you like 10 minute flights. The racing drones, you get like 7 minutes because you're like draining the crap out of a battery, like flying 50 miles an hour. And the photography, phone, photography drones usually get 20 to 30 minute flights. This one's a smart battery, so it tells you how much light is left in it. I've been having this problem, I need to call the company. It keeps doing something with the gimbal, it like freaks out. So I have to keep turning it off. <laughs> I've been looking into it and I can't find anything. Now it's perfectly fine. I'll give the other one in, I think. Oh, there it goes. you have to actually register as a pilot, like a drone pilot, and you have to take like a class and then you'll be able to make, like take, accept money for it. So I have the quite similar setup right here. So you can actually fly the drone. Simulator. So if you want to fly a drone, you can come up here and you can give it a try. 